Hello everyone, my name is uh, Billy Bagelholt. I'm an artist and painter from London. Uh, this is my work behind me. Also, behind my bed, over here. Um, I've recently been represented by the Avery Gallery and they've asked me to do a quick uh, 10 question Q&A, so uh, off I go. Um, I was having to think about this because um, I don't particularly miss things that, that much, in all honesty, so there's certain things like um, social aspect of my work, which is uh, running a brewery and the day-to-day -day kind of problem solving a bit in, in work is often, you know, someone will go, Billy, help, and then <laughs> you've got to run like across a garden to try and fix a, a tap that's broken or someone's stood on a broken glass or someone's fallen over or some drunk guy's thrown up on a lady or something so um, that kind of quick thinking um, I like so that's the, that's the kind of the, the way I paint and the way um, yeah, I live so it's yeah, very reactive um, and in lockdown it's a lot of uh, sitting down contemplating and um, having a lot of time to think So I am from North Wales, a place called Pushelly, it's a small uh, rural town, uh, the former fishing village. My mum is a farmer's daughter and my dad was a painter who taught in St Martin's, um, went to the Royal College of Arts, um, but passed away when I was quite young, so I kind of grown around his paintings um, growing up. Um, and that's been my main source of influence, basically. I've, I've been painting since the age of eight, I'd say, um, of doing, making things. You know, I, I used to grab um, my mum and dad's and sister's coats off the walls and they create big people on them on the floor outside the house and cause trouble and mayhem, you know. I'm a hellraiser. Not really, but... <laughs> a few notes down because I've, I've always struggled with this question. It's something that's cropped up quite often, but I never really know how to answer properly um, because I think yeah, influence and inspiration, they cross over for me and it's kind of, it crops up out of nowhere. So, you know, it could be one day I'm thinking about my dad's painting when he was young, seeing like a symbol, like a, a fishbone or an arrow or something in there that has stuck with me and I'm, and I'm automatically putting it like on a canvas. Like, I'm looking at this now. You can't see it. This here, like that, something like that, will just kind of, kind of crop up. Um, or the next day, it was like two months ago. I was walking um, to work, and the woman dropped a packet of prawns on the floor, and uh, they ripped open on the pavement. She just ate the whole box straight off the pavement. So um, I ended up making a, pa a painting about that. Not that it has any um, big meaning to it, but. Um, I found it interesting and tried to decant it and make it something else, I suppose, and that's what I'm often doing. Um, so yeah, influence and inspiration kind of come, comes across kind of randomly, sporadically, um, it can come out of nowhere. Um, yeah. For me, I got, I got furloughed about two, three weeks ago, so as soon as I came off, I was like, I don't know, a uh, greyhound running after the hair when I'm like, oh my god, I need to do, I need to paint right now because I'm not going to get this opportunity often where I can um, afford to live in London, paint full time and just yeah, be able to do that without working. So I think I made eight paintings in the first week, wrote four songs and uh, launched a competition on, with my gallery, the Bamba Gallery. So I was kind of just head it, head into it, and then now I'm kind of taking a little rest period. But um, for me, it's, it's kind of spurred me on to do a lot more work, just because I can feel um, I can put the energy towards that, and I've, I've got all day to do that. So um, why not take advantage of it now? Yeah. Uh, I've, I've written down not particularly, but um, if I'm thinking back, and I am frequently thinking back to where I've just been, which is Japan, um, 
that's kind of cropping up a lot more now. So I was kind of making, I was making a series on it anyway, a series of paintings. But um, even when I'm doing these new paintings that I'm doing now, and it's more uh, fluid and kind of off the top of my head, it's like I don't know, I'll be I'll be drawing like a sad-looking cowboy, and then the next minute there'll be a Japanese Akita pop up next to him, or like oh, I don't know, or a wagyu steak, or just some kind of reference back to Japan from when we were there. Um, but missing somewhere particular, not not so much because um, I predominantly live my life here. It's kind of what I've known for the last six years, and it's kind of that has always been my influence. Uh, recently, was a lot of stuff that's happened in London, or just my own mindset whilst I'm here, anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely cropping some stuff up and referencing back to my time in, in Japan. So, new techniques, no. Um, like I'm just taking a step back, I think. So, uh, I've been working, as I just mentioned in the previous question, I've been kind of working more fluid, kind of like I, how I used to paint when I was in foundation almost. So, without thinking at all, without really using any um, visual reference, I just go at it, paint, draw, whatever, see what comes up. Um, so, uh, but I've also kind of used elements of learned over the past few years where I'll introduce like a block colour at the bottom, really simple iconography, and then kind of break it up um, more more like this really, like more flat. Yeah, taking a step back is helping kind of, I don't know, you, you kind of really see what's on your mind by doing it. So I'll just be drawing and drawing and drawing and then you'll see like, um, <laughs> like I was drawing like a bunch of padlocks and a kid with a, a big bone covering his head. and. <clears throat> that was when I was kind of just coming into furlough, just come out of work and it was quite stressful because we had to let go of a uh, load of stuff or say that we, did, we didn't know what was happening but so we didn't know if the furlough scheme was going to come, we didn't know what kind of income was going to be there for them. Um, so it was kind of that stress, uh, which kind of the mental aspect of it in, in, in visual terms. Um, not yet. It's only it's only been three, two, two or three weeks for me now, so um, it hasn't brewed up. I, I don't think the concept come to me that often. Maybe I'm a slow thing. <laughs> um, but uh, as I said, I'm, I'm more like off the cuff and reactive to things around me. So it will crop up and work, but I won't be actively thinking about. Okay, so this will relate to this, and um, whatever. I'll probably most likely look at it and two to three months um, retrospectively and take it apart and see um, why I was drawing a certain thing which is at the moment probably something to do with the current situation we'll see um, I, I tried to keep it as simple as I could I just followed my normal weekly structure when I'm working I made myself a rotor um, breaking it down to like uh, 9 till 12, 12 till 5, break. Like, I'll literally structure myself in La Rota from Monday to Friday and then give myself the weekend off. So, between that, I do exercise, kind of, I don't know, a weekly shop. Just, just a big task becomes smaller tasks and you just you scale it down to what the current situation is. And then, I'm, yeah, I'm working around painting and around creating the moment. Still thinking about my job outside of painting as well. Um, for when we come back from furlough, eventually. Uh, for me here, uh, in all honesty, it's just to uh, have a big party as long as everything's safe and back to normal. But um, yeah, yeah, all my friends, everyone around, and um, yeah, <laughs> have a big party. Thank you for listening to my Q and A. Um, thank you to the Avery for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and uh, hope you keep safe during the lockdown and um, have as much of a good time as you can and hope to see you out there out of this safe cheers <laughs>